Well guys, it is another beautiful day out here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's not too cold. It is probably about, I'd say maybe minus seven, minus 10. So it's not too bad, but uh, we have the truck all packed up. Callie, are you ready to head out? Yeah, we're uh, pretty excited today because of course, as you can see by the un, uh, unbelievable amount of stuff that we have, we are going to be trying our first overnight on the ice. That's all packed. So with that, I'm not going to do too much intro. I'm not going to do too much with the uh, the beginning part because it's going to be a long day yet. We did get a little bit of a late, uh, late start today because today's kind of a relaxed day. Um, I'm not too too eager to get out there and try to rush and do everything else today who knows we may go out uh, we're probably gonna fish outside for a while until we can find a good spot then we're gonna have to go back to the truck and uh, grab all our gear and get out so if you've ever had to do an overnight on the ice uh, and walk out it's not fun it's a lot of hard work but uh, it's definitely worth uh, worth it if we can find some safe ice there so yeah let's get in the truck let's maybe grab some uh, snacks for the road and let's head out to maybe east west shoal who knows maybe we'll see East Shoal. Uh, there's East Shoal, West Shoal. There is a North Shoal as well. Um, it is pretty, pretty cloudy. So I'm gonna get the spud bar out. It looks like quite a few people are here. You can see a whole bunch of little teeny holes. I don't know where we want to head yet. I think, I think we're gonna head out there. So uh, let's get that spud bar out. Start testing some, some ice and uh, wish us luck. Oh yeah, we are probably. Do you want the pump board? Well, that deep. That is plenty of ice to do in overnight. The hard part is, because we don't have our anchors, it might get real interesting. This is shallow. This is. What, three feet? 2.1 feet. <laughs> we got a long way to go. What do you think, Callie? X marks the spot. Oh! Little jack. They're actually harder to grab when they're that small. Almost musky-ish looking. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> A little jack here. <laughs> First fish. But we're not skunked. Well, I'm not skunked. So that's spot number one. Not too bad. We're going to leave this like this. Um, one of the big things when you are on open ice, there is no, uh, not going to be any snowmobiles out here, so I'm not overly concerned about it yet. But when we do come back, we will make sure we clean off all this snow. Because of course, when it does ice up, that is pretty much like a boulder to a snowmobile. So you want to make sure not only you're safe, but everyone else that's on the ice is safe. So we'll leave it like this so we can see it. We aren't going to be that far away, uh, but we'll keep an eye on it and uh, let's see if we can find another hole. All right, so now is the part of the video that you guys are probably most interested in. How do we set up for overnights on the ice? Now, I already have my mats cut out like this. This is the layout that we've had before. I have my live scope in the middle, two holes here, two holes at the end. That's gonna be in the absolute center of our tent. I do have my uh, pilot hole drilled here. That's the one that we were looking at when we kind of did our, our scouting. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of fish, but I think this is probably gonna be as, as best a spot of any. We're just gonna start here and we'll go from there. So I always like to try to line up my holes um, away from shore. So if shore is on this side, I mean the shore on both sides, but the closest to shore, I kind of try to go against it because fish usually go, uh, you know, uh, along the shoreline. So I line up my center hole into the middle of my mast like that. Grab my... Of course, this is this one here. 
what I do is I just put my drill in the middle. Just drill my other holes. Take that mat, put that out of the way for now. And now we drill. Now I want to kind of keep my slush in a pile here because we just have ice. We want to kind of still have something to put around the, the skirt of the, the tent, especially on the wind side. So I'm going to clear a little bit more of this out. Then we'll get our center mats in. Uh, we'll get our tent set up. All right, so now the tent is up. Now the fun part of laying our flooring down. So this is after the mat is in. Now, of course, we got to set up our table here, our cots on the two sides, and then uh, we'll get all our bedding in. Now, next thing we gotta do when we're setting up that you always gotta remember, now that the holes are here, you're somewhat set up, make sure you get a line in. We're gonna get the live scope in turned on. We're gonna get some lines hanging down just in case, uh, you know, fish rolls around. Come on. Hurry up, Mike. All right, so the other thing that I did, uh, of course, if you've been watching any of my uh, lives or anything else, I attached a remote control to my light. You can't really see it that well in here, but that's gonna work really well. Almost time to get the heater in here, and then it'll be t-shirt time. Mike, that rocks, that rocks. Oh, had him. And that is why you get all your rods in right away. This is our setup. We have everything kind of packed up against the side. We ended up forgetting our our posts or the uh, the pegs. So <laughs> we're hopefully not gonna get too windy, but as you can see, this is our overnight setup. And the best thing is, I think I have it on me over here or wherever I put it. Here we go. So we have the two cots. We have our spot for our cooler. Live scope, I have my 60 amp amped outdoors backup battery there. Of course, Kelly's caught her little seating area. We have our four holes, heater. Most importantly, out of everything else. Oh, did she miss one? Second time. Second time. Oh, one sec, guys. Here's the minnows. All right. One of the biggest, most important things right here. Carbon, uh, carbon monoxide detector. Make sure you have them in there, especially if you're gonna be doing overnights, you cannot be too safe. Um, the other last thing is, like I said, I hooked up this remote here. This is gonna be able to turn my light on and off. So in the middle of the night, if all of a sudden we do have some bells going off, we can turn on the light and get some fish. So kind of a quick glimpse. I'm not gonna go too much into the detail today other than just giving you a look on it. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of overnight, so I mean, you're definitely going to be getting a, a lot of little little hints and tricks on how to do this on, on overnights. But uh, yeah, there is some fish rolling in. It's starting to get a little bit more on the evening bite, so we can get all our rods set up, keep the camera rolling, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some more fish in. We are ready for the night. Anybody else ready? Oh. Yes. Oh. We thought we had one on there. <laughs> it was on there, but I pulled it right out of his mouth. Oh, man. Lost it. Yeah. 
Well, good morning, everybody. We woke up to a couple fish on the ground. Callie has one on right now. Hopefully we can get it. It looks like a pretty decent sized one, unless there's a couple of them there. So yeah, the night wasn't too bad. We did have quite a bit of wind, and because we forgot our pegs, made it a little, uh, a little sketchy when we were sitting here at night. But we did pack a whole bunch of stuff around the outside, so I mean, I'm not overly concerned with that. I think the biggest thing right now is because there was no so snow coverage underneath, the heat did end up making this a little bit of a puddle. Yesterday was very, very slow. We caught the two fish in, I couldn't even tell you, like 14 hours. Uh, so it was really slow. Today, I don't know, probably gonna be the same thing. We're not expecting too much with the shoal lakes. Like I said, right now we're doing all the small lakes that we know for sure have a lot of ice to them. And you know, the fisheries, unfortunately, in these smaller ones aren't, aren't the best. Once we do get planned and we do get a little bit more ice, we can head up to the big lakes like Lake Winnipeg, Lake Manitoba and then we're gonna be on the hunt for some walleye. So like I said, we're gonna continue to see if we can catch this one fish at the bottom and I don't know, start packing up some of our stuff. Well everyone, day one is done. Day two has started. There is a lot of real estate left to go on here. It's only about 11 o'clock, so we're gonna see if we can drill some holes. Uh, as you can see behind me, the tent is gone and it is all transported way out there to the truck. So we are back on the ice and like I said, we're gonna drill a couple more holes, but I did want to mention a couple things about, you know, doing overnights on the ice and stuff like that. There's no such thing as being too cautious. Yeah, camping is fun. It looks really nice. It looks enjoyable, but there's a very, very serious aspect to that. Um, being on, uh, on the ice, in the elements, like exposed to the elements and having propane heat, there's so many things that can go wrong in the middle of nowhere. So make sure you let someone know where you are. Make sure you let them know when you're coming back. Try to keep in contact with them. Make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector, if not one, two, five. Have them all over the floor if you want, but there's no such thing as having too many carbon, uh, carbon monoxide detectors. Uh, other than that, the only other thing when you're doing uh, camping on the ice, as you can see, when you leave, leave nothing but your footprints. There are so many times we come out and we see you know, minnow buckets and garbage floating around. So we try to pick up as much as we can, but you know, that's one of those things that uh, everyone's gonna say all the time. Uh, hopefully you did like the the layout of the camper. Like I said, I'm gonna go a little bit more in detail on what kind of cots I use, what kind of uh, sleeping pads we use, sleeping blankets, uh, heating source and stuff like that. But right now it's too nice of a day not to get out here. Let's go drill some holes and catch some fish. Well, as much as I wanted this to be a very exciting video for you guys, We've drilled quite a few holes, haven't been able to mark anything. We've done so many different depths and variations. We've walked all over the place and still haven't been able to find anything. So it is still midday. We're gonna probably end this video here. So thank you very much for joining in. Like I say, stay tuned. I'm gonna be doing a lot of overnights. We'll give you in depths, uh, as we said before, a little bit more on, on how we do stuff. But with all that being said, we're gonna pack up. We're gonna head back to the truck and maybe head back in this city. Thank you very much for joining us on our first overnight. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, this one is a little bit more of a, a boring one. They do get better, especially when we start heading up to Hecla. Uh, where else do we do that? We do really well, pretty much anywhere. Hecla, Lake Winnipeg, Lake Manitoba. So stay with us, stay tuned. There's gonna be tons of videos coming up. So thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Um, you know, it's gonna give you a little bit of updates on our future, uh, future adventures and stuff like that as well. But uh, stay tuned. Leave nothing else on the ice until we catch you again. Keep it real.